Hey everyone, it's Shobit, and today I'm going to talk to you about a very, very important topic, which is why most product management programs just do not work. They deliver close to zero results in people's careers. And remember, when I say they don't work, it's not about that you don't get new information because you get a shit ton of information in most product management programs. What I've found though consistently is product managers or, you know, prospective product managers coming to me and saying, Shobit, I invested so much money in the program. And, you know, they told me a lot of new things, like a lot of information, maybe some of the stuff I'd heard before, but what's happened? is that I don't think my career has changed. I don't think my life has changed in any, any measurable way. It just did not work. And you know, in those conversations, I've gotten very curious, really dug deep, and I've understood over hundreds, maybe close to a thousand conversations at this point. Why don't these programs work? And you know, what could I learn from this and apply so that I'm able to create programs that do work and so this is all about sharing with you exactly what I've learned on why these programs do not work. So let, let's begin. There's going to be five reasons that, are, you know, the five main things that are missing for the programs or, or what they do that make them not work. So let's begin because we want to dig right into it. So most, the number one thing, the number one reason why most product management programs don't work is that they cover only frameworks and approaches to help you solve challenges, to help you get jobs, to do things like that. But what they don't do is they don't help you change as a person and they don't help you change your psychology, your performance psychology in a way such that you would now actually go and put those things into action. So wh what do I mean by that? So look, Tony Robbins says this thing that as far as success is concerned, 20% of success comes from the strategy, the how you do things, the methods that you take the things that you, you learn in most of these programs, which are all about, hey, here's how you go interview a customer. Here's how you go write a user story. Here is maybe some way of communicating. You know, all that's good. But the thing is, that is only 20% of success. 80% of success comes from psychology, comes from your mindset. How do you, first of all, see yourself? Do you have a level of confidence, a level of self-worth, a level of knowing that you are capable of achieving those end outcomes that you're after. Because the fact of the matter is that if you don't, what you would do is you would sabotage yourself. You will know all the right things to do, but you would right at that moment where you need to actually do them, where, for example, you need to challenge your manager, or where you need to pitch this new idea, where you need to go above and beyond, where you need to show that extreme ownership, what will happen is that you won't do shit. You won't do any of those things, even though you knew you had to do them. And that's because your psychology, the way you see yourself and your identity are not in alignment with what you actually need to do. And, you know, this is where the topic of confidence comes in. So, so many times, you know, like consistently, almost every PM tells me, Shobit, I have, you know, imposter syndrome. I feel like an imposter. And, you know, it, it's one of these things that's almost become fashionable. It's just like, oh, yeah, I have imposter syndrome. I feel like an imposter. Look at me. I'm so cool. Fuck that shit. It's you have lack of confidence. Your psychology is not aligned with the outcomes that you're after. That's a bloody problem. And any program that is not going to help you change that psychology, change that identity, change that mindset is going to fucking fail no matter what happens. 
Sorry for the F-bombs. I'm very passionate about this topic. And so what, what really matters here? What, is it, what really matters here? It matters how you see yourself. Do you understand and own your self-worth down to your bones? Do you know that you're capable of succeeding no matter what? Are you willing to go take that risk of taking extreme ownership where even if your manager is not the best manager, even if your company is not the best at product, are you willing to fight? Are you willing to go for it? That really happens when your psychology is aligned with what you're going after. And it's not just about the methods. So the number one mistake that programs, product management programs make, which is why they don't work, is they don't give a shit about psychology. They don't know anything about psychology, to be honest. They have some high level concepts. They don't know how to transform people's mindsets. They don't know how to truly coach them to tackle these tough problems. They don't know what it takes to get you from point A to point B when you are standing in your own way. So that's the number one thing. And look, you know, I could keep talking all, uh, on and on about it. And the challenge often is that somebody who's not been through any sort of transformational and mindset coaching doesn't really know what they're missing out on. And, you know, I was this way about maybe like up to four years ago, I had never had a coach. And so I thought I was reading all these bloody books and, you know, applying those and I had growth mindset and all that and, and great, you know, I was doing all those things. And that's what a lot of people are doing. But the thing is that most of the times nothing changes. They feel better about themselves because they have more information. They think that they know about imposter syndrome, but nothing has fucking changed in their life. And so what is important is that you join a program which helps you transform your mindset, transform your psychology, and doesn't stay only at the strategy level. So that was number one, not just psychology, not just strategy, but psychology. So that's one. The next one that a lot of product management programs get wrong is they never go beyond the basics. They are, as Tony Robbins called, calls it, they are majoring in minor things. What do I mean by that? They're showing you how to write better, um, user stories. They are maybe telling you a bit more that, hey, you need to really you know, think about users and they're going after personas. And um, uh, maybe some of them are even telling you about communication and what it means to be great at communication. But it's level 101. And you know, anytime I see experienced product managers or even product managers that have spent a lot of time on YouTube and books and stuff like that, they go to these expensive programs. What they find is that it's the same stuff over and over again. It, it, nothing's really changed. There's no nuance. There's no real life application. It's theoretical basics that are just being taught again and again and again in the hope that suddenly you're going to be an awesome product manager. And that shit just doesn't work. It just does not work. So the reason why that does not work is because you have never practically used it. And until you use it, and until you fail miserably, or at least have some learnings on the way, you're never going to learn the concept. Because it's not about you learning new stuff. See, learning new stuff is the first baby step. What you're really after is when that concept sinks into your bones and it just becomes part of who you are. And it's not just about what you know, but it's just something you do. I'll, I'll give you an example, communication, right? The concepts are all out there. People understand the pyramid principle. And how do you communicate in a way such that it relates to others? Maybe people do, maybe people don't. But, you know, that's the basics are well understood. How to give a presentation? Actually, the basics are well understood. It's not that hard. I'll be very honest. It's not that hard. But where people are going wrong is they're reading something and never applying it. 
and they feel great about themselves. They feel happy about themselves. They feel like, oh, I've learned something new. I'm awesome. Let me just keep going. You know what the challenge with that is? The challenge with that is that that information, it's giving you a false sense of hope that everything's okay. And that's not a place you want to be in. Because if you're getting that false sense of hope, you're going to feel temporarily good. You're going to feel like, hey, I learned something. And then nothing's going to change. So sticking to the basics level is the biggest problem. But related to that is not designing the program in the way that you can apply it, fail, learn fast, and know that this, this concept is now not just something you have learned, but it's part of you. It's become part of your identity. And that's the second reason why pro most product management programs, they're just an absolute failure. So that was second. The third one was that they don't teach you how to deal with people, how to work with people, to work in non-ideal situations where people's perceptions of you, of how product management should run, are not according, not you know the same as what Marty Kagan tells you. Because look, they're assuming a perfect world. They're assuming a world where your manager is going to define their OKRs, you're going to do your own OKRs, the company's very well structured, all those things are working well. It's this ideal environment that, hey, this is how we run product management. But have you looked at the companies and how it is actually run? Most of the time, things are fucked up. Most of the time, things are not run according to the you know Marty Kagan's book Inspired or any of the ideal product management books. And so what do you do if you're a PM there? And by the way, that that doesn't have to be in small companies that don't run product management well. Even groups at Google and Amazon and Facebook fall into the trap of not running, of not being product led, of not being product management focused. And so if you're not learning how to thrive in these scenarios, if you're not getting the strategies to influence people and move them in the right direction, if you're not applying them, and if you're not getting the mindset, the psychology to be able to move people in the right direction, you're just setting yourself up for, up for failure. Because if you look at the companies that are truly product-led, that's like 10% off of jobs, maybe even less. And so now you have this 90% of jobs where you can have no impact. And what will happen is you will likely go into this story that I've seen people go into, which is the victim mindset. The mindset of, you know, Shobit, uh, my company doesn't understand product management, so I'm just gonna leave. And, you know, I tried once, I tried to make this happen and it didn't work, so I'm just gonna leave. And I'm like, what the fuck? That is most of the world. So if you're leaving most of the world behind, how do you ever expect to be awesome in this career? You might happen to get into this one group at Google, which is doing well, and you were lucky, and, and they were completely product-led, and everything was good. But I know even their influence and in being able to change people's minds and actually bring them along on a journey of product-led transformation, as, as you know, kids are calling it these days, it's so massively important. And most product management programs completely miss that. I mean, I've seen some of them not even ever mention the topic of influence. They sort of said, oh, use data, use customer insights to influence people. But practically, how do you run a conversation? How do you facilitate a sense of influence? How do you move people forward when they're not inclined to do so? Not being taught. And so that is why most product management programs uh, one more reason why most product management programs are are failing. Okay, so we covered three. We, we covered lack of psychology. We covered that they're not going beyond the basics, and we covered that they are they not really talking about organizational influence. And by the way, this is important. It's just not influencing one people. You're trying to influence an entire organization, and so there's some science to it. There's some network thinking that you need to do, and you know it's it's not often often covered between this. So those were the first three. But what the, the next two, you'll, you know, thanks to are really interesting. 
So next two are really interesting because also most product management programs, it's a general curriculum and they have no sense of customizing it to what you need, right? No sense of giving you insight as to where do you stand right now compared to other PMs? What's your brand? You know, how do people perceive you? Uh, if they were to describe you, what are the three words they would use? And then what's the brand you need to have to get to that next stage in your career? And by the way, what is the right next stage in your career? These are questions that are so fundamental that if you don't answer them well, you can lose decades, decades, because you never understood yourself. You never understood the next move. You never really understood what it's going to take to make the next move. You never really understood what your blind spots were. And I don't think I worked with a single person who didn't have all these massive blind spots where they thought they were doing well in something, but just they weren't. The way they were being perceived, that was completely different. And so a lot of the product management programs that you come across, they're just absolutely not customized. They're all about, okay, we're going to talk, you, talk, you, talk to you about seven levels of product strategy and you know, how do you build a roadmap and what do you do here and how do you go from here to there? I mean, seriously, just go to YouTube and find all that fucking information or go to go buy a $20 Udemy course and you'll get the same information. So none of those those things are really going to matter unless you have someone who's going to help you figure out where you stand, exactly what you need to do to move to the next stage in your career. What's the right next stage in your career? depending on where you want to go long term and help you coach through this. And, and so that's why I don't even call my programs courses because courses means, you know, module A, module B, module C, go do it. No, it's not about the modules. It's about understanding your true career path, where your strengths lie and how do you leverage them to get to that next level. So that's number four, no customization, no tailoring to really what's important to you, but just a general thing of, hey, here's how you become a product manager, go fucking figure it out. And then last but not least, this is gonna be a key word here. The last thing here is focus on career, okay? So it's not about pro you being an awesome product manager only but it's about making sure you have an amazing product management career. What does that mean? Well, there's some strategy in the career, right? What's the right thing to do? What's the right next move? Where do your strengths lie? What are the trade-offs you are looking to make when you find that next role? All those things matter. But then there is the thing of figuring out, is it time for me to leave? And if so, how exactly do I find the right next job. That is such a massive thing that, you know, you, most programs are not, not serving well. Either they have a cookie cutter approach of, okay, here's what you do. Put your resume together, apply to 20 companies a day. You know, you'll get a few interviews. Here's how you interview, go do that. And then take the first one that, that you land. I mean, really? You really want that cookie cutter approach? Because what I know to be true is that one man's trash is another man's treasure. And you know, the same same thing that certain people are not taking, others love to take. So it's not always about only the fang companies. I know most PMs come and tell me, hey, I, I want to be in a fang company. But when we really get down to it, there is something really different that they need. There's a very different approach to help them land those opportunities as compared to someone who actually might be a good fit for a bank company. And now landing the opportunities, there's so much skill involved, but more than that, there's so much psychology involved. You know, how confidently do you show up and tell your stories? What are your stories in the first place? How do you actually interview with excellence? Do you even know how you're going to get better versus just you know trying at various companies and hoping something happens and interview with peers who you know just are just as bad as you and don't know shit about 
uh, what it takes to succeed here. So the, the fact of the matter is that there's all these skills and techniques and psychology that goes into helping you land the right next opportunities. And where I see over and over again is that that's just that career aspect is not a part of any product management programs, like except maybe a couple, most of them just miss out completely. They're doing the same, same shit. So, you know, like when you look at product management programs, the thing is that ultimately what I find most of them don't have is product market fit. And so they are tailoring towards doing things that give you a certificate. And you know, most people do product management programs for the hope of getting a certificate that will tell people that, oh, I'm a product manager. But no, you know, like let's be honest, certificates don't don't matter at all. Like they just don't fucking matter. Because let me ask you, how many Google PMs do you think have a have a product management certificate? Not that many. I worked with tons, maybe like a one percent, maybe like point zero one percent. I don't know. Number, it, it's irrelevant. And so, if it's irrelevant, why waste all your time and money in that? Instead, invest in the ones that will not make the same mistakes that are being made over and over again in product management programs. So, let me tell you again what the mistakes are, because look, I, I care. For you i i mean even though i don't see you i know that you know you are a person who wants to succeed otherwise you will not be watching this video i mean you know there's whether you're watching it on facebook or linkedin or youtube there's plenty of bloody cat videos and you know funny shows and sports and other things available so unless you were serious about your career you're not going to be watching this video and so what i'm asking you to do is to consider these five aspects, which are fundamental for your success. As far as the right product management programs are, uh, are concerned. So here's the five things. Number one, the program must focus not just on the strategy, but the psychology. It must help you become a different person so you can be the awesome product leader that you want to be. Second, it must go beyond the basics of how do you write user stories and you know how do you manage a backlog and how do you prioritize because you know that fucking shit just you can learn it on YouTube or read a book and you're good. Number three, must help you understand how to influence people and how to build organizational influence because unless you have that, you're going to go to 90% of companies that where everything is not completely ironed out and you'll fail miserably. Number four, it must tailor to you. What is the right next move for you? What are your strengths? What is your personal brand? What does your personal brand need to be? And help you get there. And last but not least, it must help you land that next opportunity because there's a lot of skill involved there. And the fact of the matter is you could go, you can shortcut your career. And by shortcut, I mean make massive jumps in that transition from one job to another. One of the most underutilized things that you ever have and probably one of the best places to invest your time and money. And if you need my help to figure out exactly what's going on in your career, where things are falling short, how do we get you to the next level? Go to intentionalproductmanager.com forward slash apply. Intentionalproductmanager.com forward slash apply. Set up time with me. You'll first pick a time to talk with me or my team. You'll also get a follow on form, which is absolutely essential. It takes two minutes, but it's important. I don't take any calls without that because that, because I, I need to know that you're actually serious. You know, I don't I want to talk to just people who are looking to chat. I want people who are looking to make that next move, who are looking to get to that next level and are 100% dedicated because without that, nothing else really matters. It, it doesn't really uh fucking matter so you know that's an absolute requirement and then we'll chat we'll figure out exactly what's wrong in your career where is it that you want to be if i can help i'll show you how but like a lot of people who are not the right people for me to help i send them to other places uh either way you get a lot of value you get massive clarity 
and we both have a great time on the call. Look forward to speaking with you and make sure you don't enroll in product management programs that don't work. The show bit, and I'll see you very soon.